자투리 시간에 책 읽기 자, 하지 못한 것에 대해서 핑계 대는 건 쉽습니다 근데 하는 것에 대해서 이유를 만드는 것은 생각처럼 이렇게 쉽지는 않은 것 같아요 그래도 해야 합니다 어, 뭐, 이유는 하나 내가 내가 한 약속을 지키지 못하면 내가 원하는 것도 이루어 나갈 수 없기 때문에 무조건 지켜야 됩니다 미래의 나에게 보여주는 내 모습 나중에 나를 볼때 내가 어떻게 생각할지 뭐 그리고 미래의 나는 어떤 모습으로 내가 바꿔 놓을지는 현재의 내가 결정하는 거니까 포기하지 않고 잠시 쉬는 것은 있을 수 있지만 포기한, 포기하는 게더 나쁜 거니까 포기하지 않고 해보도록 하겠습니다 The Catcher in the Rye The Catcher in the Rye Chapter 3 I'm the most terrific liar you ever saw in your life. It's awful. If I'm on my way to the store to buy a magazine even, and somebody asks me where I'm going, I'm liable to say I'm going to the opera. It's terrible. So when I told the old dispenser I had to go to the gym and get my equipment and stuff, that was a sheer lie. I don't even keep my goddamn equipment in the gym. Where I lived at Pansy, I lived in the Osenberger, Osenberger, Osenberger Memorial Wing of the, of the new dorms. It was only for juniors and seniors. I was a junior. My roommate was a senior. It was named after this guy, Osenberger, that went to Pansy. He made a pot of dough in the undertaking business after he got out of Pansy. What he did? He started these undertaking parlors. He started these undertaking parlors all over the country that you could get members of your family buried for about five bucks a piece. You should see old Osenberger. He probably just shoves them in a shack, in a sex, sex, and dumps them in the river. Anyway, he gave a pencil a pile of dough, and they named our wing after him. The first football game of the year, he came up to school in this big goddamn Cadillac, and we all had to stand up in the. Grandstand and give him a locomotive that's a cheer. Then the next morning, in Chapel, we made a speech that lasted about 10 hours. He started off with about 50 corny jokes, jokes just to show us what a regular guy he was. A very big deal. Then he started telling us how he was never ashamed. When he was in some kind of trouble or something, to get right down his knees and pray to God. He told us we should always pray to God, talk to him and all, wherever we were. He told us we ought to think of Jesus as our buddy and all. He said he talked, he talked to Jesus all the time, even when he was driving his car. They killed me. I just see the big funny bastard shifting into first gear and asking Jesus to send him a few more big funny bastard shifting into first gear. Uh, the sh I just see I just see the big funny bastard shifting into first gear and asking Jesus to send him a few more shift tips. The only good part of his speech was right in the middle of it. He was telling us all about what a swell good he was, uh, what a hot shot and all. Then all of, us, all of a sudden, this guy is sitting in the raw in front of me, Edgar Marcello, laid his terrific fart. It was, it was a very good thing to do in chapel and all. But it was also quite amusing. Old Marshallow, he damn near blew the roof off. 
hardly anybody rapped out loud, and old Osenberger made out like he didn't even hear it. But old Thummer, the headmaster, was sitting right next to him on the roast, roast room, and all, oh, and you could tell he heard it. Boy, was he sore. He didn't say anything then. But the next, no next night, he made us have a compulsory study hall in the academic, academic building and he came up and made a speech. Speech. He said that the boy that had created the disturbance in chapel wasn't fit to go to Pansy. He tried to get old Marshaller to rip off another one. Right while old Dermer and making his speech, but he, but B wasn't, but he wasn't in the right mood. Anyway, that's where I lived at Pansy, old Osenberger Memorial Wing, in the new dorms. Old Osenberger Memorial Memorial Wing, in the new dorms. It was pretty nice to get back to my room. After I left the old Spencer, because everybody was down at the game and the heat was on in our room for a change, it felt sort of cozy. I took off my coat and my tie and unbuttoned my shirt collar. And then I put on this hat that I'd bought in New York that morning. It was this red hunting hat with one of those very, very long picks. I saw it in the window of this sports store when we got out, when we got out of the subway. Just after I noticed I'd, I'd lost all the goddamn foils. It only cost me a buck. The way I wore it, I swung the old pick away around to the back, very corny. I'll admit, but I liked it that way. I looked good in, in it that way. Then I got this book I was reading and sat down in my chair. There were two chairs in every room. I had one and my roommate was straddle straddle later. Straddle later had one. The arms were in sad shape because everybody was always sitting on them, but they were but they were pretty comfortable chairs. The book I was reading was this book. I took out of the library my mistake. They gave me the wrong book and I didn't notice it till I got back to my room. They gave me Out of Africa by Isaac and Isaac Dinerson. I thought it was going to stink, but it didn't. It was a very good book. I'm quite illi illiterate, but I read a lot. My favorite author is I read I read a lot. My favorite author is my bro my brother D B, and my next favorite is Ring Radner. My brother gave me a book by Ring Lardner for my birthday just before I went to Pansy. It had these very funny crazy plays in it. And then it had this one story about a ter terrific, terrific cop, terrific cop that falls in love with this very cute girl that's always speeding. Only he's married, the cop, so he can't marry her or anything. Then this girl gets killed because she's always speeding. That story just about killed me. What I like best is a book that's at least funny once in a while. I read a lot of classical books like The Return of the Native and all. And I like them. And I read a lot of war books and the mysteries and all, but they don't knock me out too much. 
What really knocks me out is a book that, when you are, when you are all done reading it, you wish the author that wrote it was a terrific friend of yours, and you could call him up on the phone whenever you felt like it. That doesn't happen much, though. I wouldn't mind calling this Isaac Dinesen up, and the ring Laudner, except that DB told me his dad. You take that book of Human Bondage by Som Somerset Mom. Though, by Somerset Mom, though, though, I read it last summer. It's a pretty good book and all. But I wouldn't have want to call Somerset Mom, Somerset Mom up. I don't know. Mohem? Somerset Mohem? Mohem? Uh... I don't know. I don't know. He just isn't the kind of guy I'd want to call up. That's all. I'd rather call all the Thomas Hardy up. I like the Eustasia V. Anyway, I put on my new hat and sat down and started reading that, reading that book out of Africa. I'd read it already. But I wanted to read certainly part of part over again. I'd only read about three pages though, when I heard somebody coming through the shower curtains. Even without looking up, I knew right away who it was. It was Robert Ackley. This guy that roomed right next to me. There was a shower right between every two rooms in our wing, and about 85 times a day old Ackley barred barged in on me barged in on me he was probably the only guy in the whole dorm besides me there wasn't down at the game he hardly ever he hardly ever went anywhere he was a very peculiar guy he was a senior he was a senior and he'd been at pansy the whole four years and all but nobody ever called him anything except ackley not even herb gale his own roommate ever called him Bob or even Ack. If he ever gets married, his own wife will probably call him Ackley. He was one of these very, very tall, round-shouldered guys. He was about 6'4 with a lousy teeth. The whole time he roomed next to me, I never even once saw him brush his teeth. They always looked mosey and awful, and he damn near made you sick if you saw him in the dining room with his mouth full of mashed pot potatoes and peas or something. Besides that, he had a lot of pimples, not just on his forehead or his chin like most guys, but all over his whole face. And not only that, he had a terrible personality. He was also sort of a nasty guy. I wasn't too crazy about him, to tell you the truth. I could feel him standing on the shower ledge, right behind my chair, taking a look to see if, if Stradlater was around. He hated Stradlater's guts, and he never came in the room if Stradlater, Stradlater was around. He hated everybody's guts damn near. He came down off the shower latch and came in the room. Hi, he said. He always said it like he was ter terrifically bored uh, or terrifically tired. He didn't want you to think he was visiting you or anything. He wanted you, he wanted you to think he'd come in by mistake, for God's sake. Hi, I, I said. But I didn't look up from my book with a guy like Ackley. If you looked up from your book, you were a goner. Goner. You were a goner anyway. But not as quick if you didn't look right away. He started walking around the room, very slowly, very slow and all. The way he always did. Picking up your personal stuff off your desk and... Chifornier. He always picked up your picked up your personal stuff and looked at it. Boy, could, 
Could he get on your nerves sometimes? How was the fencing? He said. He just wanted me to quit reading and enjoy myself. He didn't give a damn about the fencing. We win or what? He said. Nobody won, I said. Without looking up though. What? He said. He always made you say everything twice. Nobody won. I said, I sneaked a look to see what he was fiddling around with on my cheap phone here. He was looking at this picture of this girl I used to go around with in New York, Sally Hayes. He must have picked, he must have picked up that goddamn picture and looked at it at least 5,000 times since I got it. He always put it back in the wrong place too. When he was finished, he did it on purpose. You could tell. Nobody won, he said. How come? I left the, the goddamn foils and the stuff on the subway. I still didn't look up at him. On the subway for Chris's sake. Yeah, I lost them. Yeah, I mean. We got on the wrong subway. I had to keep getting up to look at a goddamn map on the wall. He came over and stood right in my line. Hey, I said, I've read this I've read this same sentence about 20 times since you came in. Anybody else except Ackley would have taken the goddamn hint. Not him though. Think they they will make they will make ya uh, pay for them, he said. I don't know and I don't give a damn. How about the sitting down or something? Ackley kid. You're right in my goddamn light. He didn't like it when you called him Ackley Kid. He was always telling me I was a goddamn kid. Because I was 16 and he was 18. It drove him mad when I called him Ackley Kid. He kept standing there. He was exactly the kind of guy that wouldn't get out of your light when you asked him to. He'd do it. Finally, but it took him a lot longer if you asked him to. What the hell are you reading? He said, got them book. He showed my book bag with his hand so that he could see the name of it. Any good? He said. This sentence I'm reading a terrific. I can be quite sarcastic when I'm in the mood. He didn't get it though. He started walking around the room again, picking up all my personal stuff and straddlators. Finally, I put my book down on the floor. You couldn't read anything with a guy like Ackley around. It was impossible. I slid away the hell down in my chair and watched old Ackley making himself at home. I was feeling sort of tired from the trip to New York and all, and I started yawning. Then I started horsing around a little bit. Sometimes I horse around quite a lot, just to keep from getting bored. What I did was I pulled the old peak of my hunting hat around to the front, then pulled it away, pulled it way down over my eyes. That way I couldn't see a goddamn thing. I think I'm going blind, I said in this very hoarse voice. Mother darling, everything's getting so dark in here. You are nuts, I swear to God, Ackley said. Mother darling, give me your hand. Why won't you give me your hand? For Chris's sake, I grew up. I started, <coughs> I started groping around in front of me like a blind guy, but without getting up or anything, I kept saying. Mother, darling, why won't you give me your hand? I was only horsing around naturally. That stuff gives me a bang sometimes. Besides, I know it annoyed the hell out of old Ackley. He always brought out the old sadist in me. I was pretty sadistic with him quite often. Finally, I quit though. I pulled the pick around to the back again and relaxed. 
Who belongs to this? Ackley said. He was holding my roommate's knee supporter up to show me. The guy Ackley picked up anything. He'd even pick up your jock strap or something. I told him it was Stradlator's. So he chuckled it on Stradlator's bed. He got it. He got it off Stradlator's cheap furniture. So he chucked it on the bed. He came over and sat down on the arm of Stradlator's chair. He never sat down in a chair. Just always on the arm. Well, the hell I get the hat? He said. New York. How much? A buck? You got robbed. He started cleaning his goddamn fingernails with the end of a match. He was always cleaning his fingernails. It was funny in a way. His teeth were always mosey looking, and his ears were always dirty as hell. But he was always cleaning his fingernails. I guess he thought that made him a very neat guy. He took another look at my hat while he was cleaning them. Upon we wear a hat like that to shoot the deer, deer in for Christ's sake, he said. That's a deer shooting hat. Like hell it is. I took it off and looked at it. I sort of closed on one eye. Like I was taking aim at. Aim at it. This is a people shooting hat. I said. I shoot people in this hat. Your folks know you got kicked out yet? Nope. Well, the hell just throw later. And anyway, down at the game. He's got, he's got a date. I yawned. I was yawning all over the place. For one thing, the room was too damn hot. It made you sleepy. I fancy you either froze to death or died of the heat. The great strutter later, Ackley said, Hey, lend me our scissors a second, will ya? Ya got them handy? No, I packed them already. They are way in the top of the closet. Get em a second, will ya? Ackley said, I got this hangnail I want to cut off. He didn't care if you'd packed something or not and had it way in the top of the closet. I got them for him though. I nearly got killed doing it too. The second I opened the closet door, Stradlator's tennis racket, in its wooden press and all, fell right on my head. It made a big clunk and it hurt like hell. It damn near killed the old Ackley though. He started laughing in this very high falsetto voice. Falsetto voice. He kept laughing the whole time I was taking down my suitcase and getting the scissors out for him. Something like that. A guy getting hit on the head with a rock or something. Tickled the pants off. Tickled the pants off he actually. You have a damn good sense of humor, Ackley kid, I told him. You know that? I handed him the scissors. Let me be younger manager. I'll get you on the goddamn radio. I sat down in my chair again, and he started cutting his big, horny-looking nails. How about using the table or something? I said. Cut them over the table, will ya? I don't feel like walking on your crumby nails in my bare feet tonight. He kept right on cutting them over the floor, though. What lousy manners. I mean it. Who's your Stradlator's date? He said. He was always keeping tabs on who Stradlator was dating, even though he hated Stradlator's guts. I don't know why. No reason, boy. I can't stand that. Son of a son of a bitch. He's the one son of a bitch I really can't stand. He's crazy about you, he told me. He thinks you're a goddamn prince, I said. I call people a prince quite often when I'm horsing around. It keeps me from getting bored or something. He's got this superior attitude all the time, Ackley said. I just can't stand the son of a bitch 
you'd think he... Do you mind cutting your nails over the table? Hey? Do you mind cutting your nails over the table? Hey? I said, I've asked you about the 50. He's got this goddamn superior attitude all the time. Ackley said, I don't even think the son of which is intelligent. He thinks he is. He thinks he is about the most. Ackley, for Christ's sake. Will you please cut your crummy nails over the table? I've asked you 50 times. He started cutting his nails over the table for a change. The only way he ever did anything was if you yelled at him. I watched him for a while. Then I said, The reason you are so at start later is because he said that stuff about brushing your teeth once in a while. He didn't mean to insert you. For crying out loud, he didn't say it right over anything, but he didn't mean anything insulting. All he meant was you'd look better and feel better if you sort of brushed your teeth once in a while. I brush my teeth. Don't give me that. No, you don't. I've seen you. And you don't, I said. I didn't say it nasty, though. I felt sort of sorry for him in a way. I mean, it isn't too nice, naturally. If somebody tells you, you don't brush your teeth. Strada later said, right, he's not too bad, I said. You don't know him. You don't know him. You don't know him. That's the trouble. You don't know him. That's the trouble. I still say he's a son of a bitch. He's a conceited son of a bitch. He's conceited. But he's very generous in some things. He really is, I said. Look, suppose, for instance, Stradalatus was wearing a tie or something that you liked. Say he had a tie on that you liked a hell of a lot. I'm just giving you an example now. You know what he'd do? He'd probably take it off and give it to you. He really would. Or you know what he'd do? He'd leave it on your bed or something. But he'd give you the goddamn time. Most guys would probably just... Hell, Ackley said, if I had this doll, I would too. No, you wouldn't. I shook my head. No, you wouldn't, Ackley, kid. If you had his doll, you'd be one of the biggest... Stop calling me Ackley, kid. God damn it. I'm old enough to be your lousy father. No, you're not. Boy, he could really uh, aggra aggra aggravating, aggra aggravating sometimes. He could really be aggregating sometimes. He never missed a chance to let you know you were 16 and he was 18. In the first place, I wouldn't let you in my goddamn family, I said. Well, just a cut out calling me. All of a sudden, the door opened, and all the Stradulator barged in, in a big hurry. He was always in a big hurry. Everything was a very big deal. He came over to me and gave me these two playful as hell slaps on both cheeks, which is something that can be very annoying. Listen, he said, you going out any, anywhere is special tonight? I don't know, I might. What the hell is it doing out? What the hell is it doing out? Snowing? He had snow all over his coat. Yeah, listen, if you're not going out any place special, how about letting me your hound tooth jacket? Who won the game, I said. It's only the half. We are leaving, Strada later said. No kidding. You are gonna use your hound tooth tonight or not? I spilled some crap all over my gray flannel. No, but I don't want you straight stretching it with your goddamn shoulders and all. I said we were practically the same height, height but he, weigh he weighted about twice as much as I did. He had these very broad shoulders. I won't stretch it, 
He went over to the closet in a big hurry. Who's your boy, Ackley? He said to Ackley. He was at least a pretty friendly guy, said the latter. It was partly a phony kind of friendly, but at least he always said hello to Ackley and all. Ackley just sort of grunted when he said, How's your boy? He wouldn't answer him, but he didn't have guts enough not to at least grunt. Then he said to me, I think I'll get going. See ya later. Okay, I said. He never exactly broke your heart when he went back to his own room. All the Stradlator started taking off his coat and the tie and all. I think maybe I'll take a fast shape, he said. He had a pretty heavy beard. He really did. Where do you date? I asked him. She's waiting in the annex. He's, she's waiting in the annex. He went out the room with his toilet kit and the tower under his arm. No shirt on or anything. He always walked around in his, ba in his bare torso because he thought he had a damn good build. He did too. I have to admit it.